This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Check out the Southtown Hyundai Advantage at southtownhyundai.ca. It is time for Verbal Diaries. All right, dear diary. I made a chocolate cake yesterday because there was a full moon and I read that with the Libra worm moon, you're supposed to make something that brings you joy. So I made a cake. Um, It did specifically say make a good dinner, but I don't care. I made a chocolate cake and it was so good and I can't bake at all. So it's one out of every 25 attempts Mm. that something actually tastes good. Or I don't have to throw it out immediately. That sounds generous of you. Yeah, you're right. One in 30. One in 30 at (laughs) least. But, and this is why. Because I don't follow the instructions. Even last night, I was like, I'm going to put some coffee in this cake mix and see what happens. It's so good. Mm. So also, kind of a side note recommendation for my future cake creations. You got to add some coffee, some lukewarm old coffee really to your cake mix it'll make it moist okay yeah my turn for uh verbal diaries dear diary i had my daughter all weekend and she seemed a little emotionally raw at times and i think i actually figured out parenting it's the moon just blame the moon okay yeah, the full the moon. moon is the reason behind everything it's probably true actually but yeah. uh if your kids acting out they need love and attention if your kid is annoying the hell out of you they need love and attention just like two minutes of it is all they need yeah if your kid's sad love and attention if your kid is sick they need a covid test and then love and attention (laughs) okay but i actually did hear that once that when your kid's being really annoying Mm -hmm. all you have to do is stop whatever you're doing and give them your full attention for two minutes. Well, it was, and then it fills them back up. Their fuel is full. Their tank is full. And then they go away. Like as soon as the screens, other distractions were put away and we could just talk, be, laugh. It was like there was a reset button on her that got hit and she was just peaceful again. So love and attention. Ryder and Lisa. On Play 107. So Seth Rogen on the cover of GQ. And uh, people are eating it up. He looks great. Yeah, um, there's a really funny tweet where it's a comparison of a photo of him from back in like the super bad days compared to him on the cover of GQ. Mm -hmm. And the first photo says, my boyfriend's while dating me. And it's the old Seth Rogen. With like... With like dorky outfit. uh, Yeah, ugly sweater. Yeah, glasses that don't fit his face, hair that's all disheveled. And then it says, with the new GQ one, my boyfriend's after dating me. And he looks bougie and Mm. cool. It's funny. Here's my problem with this tweet. This is a personal problem for you, though. Something I've noticed for sure Mm -hmm. is that when guys try to step out of their comfort zone... With fashion. They're definitely not getting support from their male friends. No. So you'd think it would have to be the females that support trying new things fashion-wise. But it's not much better with with females. So sure, this is my, my, just my past with wearing a unique hat. Or like something, and people will take that first opportunity to chirp you. And that's even for like women that have been close in my life. Okay. That like, what the hell are you wearing? Right. So someone like Seth Rogen who steps onto this fashion shoot Mm -hmm. wearing what looks to be male Uggs. With uh, light blue center pleat baggy dress pants, Mm -hmm. uh, button up floral shirt with a long beige jacket over it. It's like a pea coat, yeah. And a straight brim cowboy hat. And glasses. Yeah, if I wore that, Mm -hmm. you would ask me what circus I'm planning on attending. Like you specifically would. Me? Uh, Yes. What did you say about my outfit yesterday? I don't remember. Uh, I don't like that shirt under that shirt. No, I just said the shirt. The hat didn't go with the shirt. I was just giving advice. But you know what? You didn't ask for it. So I'm learning a lesson today Mm -hmm. to just mind my business. But I also looked in my closet and I was like, I'm going to try something new today. And that's the response. Plus, what did you say about my mustache? I also don't remember. Mm -hmm. What did I say about it? That you don't like it? (laughs) 
So, guys, all I'm saying is if there is a guy in your life that wants to, like, think outside the box of fashion and maybe try something new, just be supportive that they're, like, finding themselves okay. in what they wear and what they project. I would like project. to publicly apologize to you <laughs> because I oh. know that it's very vulnerable for a man to shave his face and come out of the bathroom to face his family members, his roommates. Mm-hmm. It's a vulnerable moment. So I'm very sorry that I shot down your confidence in that moment. I do apologize. Well, for me, I mean, I don't have much that I can do with my hair. So I kind of went to the hairdresser yesterday and tried something new with a mustache that I'll probably wear for two weeks and then get rid of anyway. But you're the hairdresser. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Which you're saving a lot of money. So that's cool. Totally. All right. So this is really good advice. If there is a man in your life Mm. that is maybe trying a new fashion trend, a new hat, new shoes. Yeah. Or like a new new combo. And if they look like they have confidence, let that be what's sexy. See, that's the thing about Seth Rogen is I bet he doesn't care what anyone thinks about him. Well, and I guess that I'm sure he's been made fun of in the past and he just doesn't care. That's a good way to go about it, too. So there's a tip for the men. Who cares what they say? Play 107. This is the first time I've ever heard of Elon Musk's brother. Kimball Musk has started something really cool, the Million Gardens Movement. It's a charitable and educational initiative that puts a garden in hopefully every household, whether even if it's in like a fire escape, in a window box, Mm. as part of a community garden initiative, fresh fruit and vegetables on every plate is the goal. So for a $10 donation, they're putting them in classrooms and they've already distributed over 5,000 of them. Tell me something good. It's awesome. I'm like I'm starting to really consider putting a significant garden in my backyard. Just because how awesome would it be to right. be like, I want a BLT, and <laughs> all I need to do is buy the B. You know, because <laughs> right. I have the L and the T. Uh, my story is about uh, Goodwill in the states where Andrea was working and was sorting some clothes that had been donated and felt uh, like a bundle. In one of the pockets, forty two thousand dollars of one hundred dollar bills. Okay. Her first what? thought. Her first thought was that her daughter's birthday party's coming up, <laughs> and that she's gonna throw her a shaker. But then said that she does believe in karma and couldn't imagine keeping the money for herself. So she reported it. They managed to track down the uh, people that donated the clothes and give the money back, and they gave Andrea thousand dollars for her. Uh, the birthday. I guess ethical move and for her daughter's birthday. But yeah. Wow. Uh, crazy, right? I, I, how do you donate 40? I do don't you know. A bundle of $42,000 that you forget about. How do you have $42,000 <laughs> to begin <laughs> with? You're right. <laughs> Tell me something good. Crazy weather the last, I guess, about 16, 17 hours, really. Uh, so we've sent Lisa outside to do a fake chopper traffic and weather. We don't have the budget for an actual helicopter, but we do have the budget for sound effects. So we'll use those in a sec here. Uh, hey, what's up? Okay, I'm going to open the door now. Are you ready? I bet you'll be able to hear the wind. Ready? You're going to open the door of the helicopter. <laughs> No, I'm going outside to get into my helicopter. Oh, okay, let's go. Whoa, you could hear that. Really? Yeah. Oh my All right, let's do this. Just getting into my helicopter. One second. Put it on my seatbelt. Okay, I'm going to start the sound effects. Thank you. Take it away. All right. This is your fake chopper traffic and weather with me, Lisa. Starting with your traffic, cars are slipping around out there this morning like Canadian geese trying to land on a frozen pond. And just (laughs) like those geese, we're all wishing we were in Palm Springs right now. (laughs) Oh, crap. My paper just flew away. Hold on. Oh, s***. Out of the helicopter? Yeah. Hold on. I gotta get it. (laughs) No. Are, are you running it's after it? Yeah, okay, it's gone. I gotta improvise. All right, um, in weather, bad news if you have a toupee, it's time to say goodbye to it. Unless you have Gorilla Glue. 
<laughs> Too bad you didn't have some of that for your script that you took outside. This traffic and weather. This traffic and weather is brought to you by that sweater you ordered online recently. Unfortunately, it's on one of the ships behind the Ever Given ship in the Suez Canal. It won't be arriving anytime soon. And no, we cannot give you a refund. Okay, I'm coming back and start. I'm so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Don't slip. Boy. One of my favorite things to do is take funny sound effects, whether it's uh, something a listener does, a crazy laugh, a noise, or even uh, something Lisa does, and then I build remixes with it. Of course. So uh, today, as you were outside doing a segment earlier, you were quite excited to get back inside because the weather's so terrible. And this is how you decided to say goodbye. Bye. All right, so I've uh, taken that and I've put it to some tunes. We're going to start with a Canadian classic from Fifi Dobson. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, that, was, that one was easy, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's slow it down a little bit with some Michelle Branch. Okay. Oh, that one's my favorite so far. What else do you have? Oh, well, this one's pretty obvious <laughs> from InSync. All right. And this one, not so obvious, going a little uh, out of format here to a classic Alan Jackson song. Are you what, ready? What song would that be? I go downtown. Boy! Mercury or two. Crazy about a Mercury. Yeah, I'm crazy about a Mercury. I'm gonna be a Mercury and cruise it up and down the road. There it is. Today's Lisa Remix. Yeah, if you want to download that uh, playlist, just hit us up on the text line. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe we should make Lisa's Random Noise Monday Remix a segment. Yeah, seriously. Play it is time for Unsung Heroes. This is where we give shout-outs to people, places, and things that don't always get the attention and love they deserve. Shout-out to the 70-kilometer win this morning. Haven't seen something that fast since me running towards chocolate sales after Easter. <laughs> or would that be before because it's not Easter yet? I mean, I did it last year. Every year. <laughs> before and after. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to getting to watch a small dog this weekend, interact with a Great Dane, and finally fully understanding small man syndrome. Yep. Shout out to Kourtney Kardashian and Megan Fox for dating punk rock stars Travis Barker and Machine Gun Kelly. Guess this means I need to invest in a leather jacket and start going to punk rock shows. It's trendy again. Mm. Shout out to the Oilers having a chance to get some redemption tonight against the Leafs and finding a way to probably not do that again. <laughs> Shout out to that boat that's stuck in the Seuss Canal for six days now. Sounds like all of us after fondue night. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to the full moon last night and blaming everything on it. Cranky, full moon. Full moon. Late for work, full moon. Mm -hmm. Draining your joint bank account and running away to Mexico with your personal trainer, full moon. Shout out to the scissors I keep in my car. So convenient for opening things that I just bought, protecting myself from people who approach my vehicle, and for cutting my split ends while I wait in the Starbucks lineup. <laughs> and finally, shout out to the weather today. And when your coworker tells you it's wind, it's windy, you responding with, "No, it's Monday." <laughs> what? Can you say that again? It's windy. Like, when, oh. <laughs> when your coworker okay. tells you it's windy and you say, <laughs> no, it's Monday. <laughs> Play 107, Ryder and Lisa. Wow, what a night. Thank you for introducing me to uh, full moon burning sessions. Yeah, manifesting. Okay. So there was a really important full moon last night, the Libra full moon, the worm moon. I don't understand. So I'm just learning more about the moon and how it affects us 
so I've I've been keeping track of the full moon. Mm-hmm. So I knew that March 28th there would be a full moon. So I prepared for it. And if you don't own crystals, that's okay. You don't need them, but I like okay. to charge mine when there's a full moon. So I put them on the windowsill. Hold on. So if you do crystal. No, 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 no. <laughs> if you kidding. own crystals. Yeah, okay. So something that you could still do today because the full moon was just here. Um, it's not too late. You can still do a session of manifesting. So basically, it's a really good time to check in with yourself and write down a list of things that don't serve you anymore. And you burn them with a candle mm-hmm. or a fire or whatever. And like really sit down. And if it's the, if there are things in your life that you don't want anymore, write them down, burn them. But something I learned is you have to write down things that you want to manifest the same amount of them. Because if you burn something and get rid of something, that leaves space it. for something else to come into your okay. life. And you want to manifest that thing. Well, we'll we'll see how it works, because what I decided to burn last night was the mm -hmm. Leafs beating the Oilers. I it doesn't serve me anymore. Okay, and it's time for a change. So we'll see if it works because they play again tonight. Is that actually what you wrote down? What? The anniversary today, 20 years ago today, a big song came out. And you don't want to say it because we're both insecure. We don't know how it's pronounced. And it's huge. And it's a big song. It was a collaboration of strong, confident women. Lil Maya, or sorry, Lil Kim, Maya, Pink, Pink was on the track. Christina Aguilera. Huge song. It's, go ahead. You, know, you say it. I'll say the first word. You say the second no, word. Lady. Yes. No, I I say the first say Lady. No, I want to say Lady. <laughs> lady, okay, let's both we'll say it really, really fast. When you don't know how to pronounce something, you just say it really quick. Ready? Lady Marmalade. Lady Marmalade. Okay, let's both say it at the same time at what we think it actually is. Okay. One, One two, two, three. three. Lady, lady Marmalade. Hey. Is it Marmalade or Marmalade? No, it, I, I believe Creole it's Marmalade. Lady Mar- Marmalade. Laud. It's Laud. I think it's just Lady Marmalade. No. Listen. Marmalade. Lady Marmala. But she doesn't Marmala. say. Yeah, Lady Marmala. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think after a song has been out for 20 years, people would feel confident saying Nobody's it. Nobody's confident. They aren't even. They're singing it. Lady Marmala. <laughs> Play 107. So Little Nos X has a new line of shoes that has sold out immediately. They're like a Satan-themed shoe. Yep. They were sold out in under a minute. How are people supposed to buy things? Yeah. Do you wait? You honestly sit at a computer and you wait and then you refresh and then just hope that you can get something? Didn't you have a similar situation when you were trying to buy yeah, those, some limited edition shoes? Those Terry Fox Adidas yes. shoes. And I really wanted a pair of the blue ones that he wore for his run across Canada. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, no, they weren't available. And quite disappointed. And then they became made available later again. And I was like, oh, well, I'm in a different financial situation. You know, I don't have as much expendable income at this moment. So, no, I'm not going to buy those shoes. And now I don't have the shoes. So, yeah, it's disappointing. The world is built for people that are, like, eager to go, though. You look at, like, the camping situation in Alberta. Mm -hmm. I'm the kind of guy that decides on Wednesday that I want to go camping for the weekend. Right. I don't decide six months in advance or three months in advance. Like, you have to this year. Yeah, my mom has a calendar, and she writes out, like, what weekends they're going away over the next, like, four months if if they're going to go camping or not, if they're going to be able to. Yeah. I'm like, who, how? So, exactly. I'll end up camping uh, in my backyard for a weekend with no shoes. Lighter <laughs> and Lisa. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Play 107.